So you finally picked up an NES console that you always wanted from childhood, or you found that old one that was forgotten in the closet. I got mine in a silent auction, and the outside is in great shape, but I forgot to check the inside of it to see if it was worn out. As you can see, it's a bit loose, and I'm barely gripping this copy of Tetris at all to do this. So let's jump into how to remedy this. Many people think you need to install a brand new 72 pin connector when you get any old NES console for it to work properly and unfortunately this is just false. You can just refurbish it. The plus side is these are pretty easy to open with only 6 screws on the bottom in these spots. There are pros and cons for refurbishing and purchasing new parts but I will go over those a little bit later. The one main downside right now is that if you're using a swappable bit screwdriver like mine you will have some problems opening up the case. Even my small electric drill won't fit into this corner hole, so you'll need a long neck screwdriver like this to get that last screw out. It's a small problem, but if you only have swappable bit screwdrivers like mine, well, you're kind of screwed. Once you collect your bottom screws and open the top housing, you're greeted by, you guessed it, more screws. Seven more screws to be exact. And when you're done getting these out, you'll have more screws to take out. I don't know why Nintendo used so many screws for this design, but man oh man, there are a lot of them. Almost as bad as the N64. But on a side note, this unit is very clean for its age. There's still some dust here and there that we'll clean up later, but overall, it's in really good shape, and I'm pretty happy I won this on bid, even though it needs some fixes. Alright, well thank god that's off. Oh, hey look, more screws. These are all Phillips head screws, so that really does help with the removal of them. And you really only need two tools for this entire refurbishment. You'll see the other one coming up soon. Hmm. If we've removed all the screws holding this part in, why doesn't it come out a lot easier then? Ah, of course. More screws! Now you can finally get access to the 72 pin attached to the main board. If you bought a new 72 pin, just swap it out at this point with your OEM one here and reinstall all those screws. But if you want to keep your unit 100% original, move on to the next steps by removing it carefully and not how I did it. Turns out the bottom of the circuit board is a little sharp and when you push your thumb upwards to remove the connector, it can sometimes go into the needle-like component legs on the bottom of the board. Just something to remember when you do this on your machine. Over time your 72 pin gets worn out from all of your game swapping. The little pins inside of the connector housing start to bend away instead of going towards your game cartridges. When this happens, the main problem is your games just won't load. Nintendo made these really well, and that's another reason why I hate to swap in a new one for the tried and true original parts. Unfortunately, they just get worn out over time, and that's where we come in in order to fix them. Grab any small tool you can find or make into a tool. I like to use a small pair of tweezers, but you can do this process with a big safety pin if you'd like. Start by carefully pulling on each of the pins in the connector. You don't want to pull on them too hard, just enough to bend them upwards so they look like this. Do the same process throughout the entire connector and gently bend them all upwards. Then flip the connector around to do the same thing to the other side of the same pins to make sure they are all evenly bent back into shape. Once you have all your pins bent in place, you'll want to remove any dirt or corrosion on them that may be preventing the games from getting a good connection. You can do this with a small tool or screwdriver and scrape each to get them nice and bright again, but I like to use some sandpaper for this instead. Just lightly buff the pins to get the surface corrosion off and they should look nice and bright when you're done. Clean them off with a little canned air or some IPA to make sure all of the dust is removed and you can reassemble. Another option I've tried in the past with varying results is boiling the connector. Seems really odd, right? Water and electronics don't normally mix very well. I haven't had it work well for me, but apparently some people have it work really well to not only clean your connector, but I guess the pins bend back to their original shape with the heat from boiling. It didn't really work for me, and that's why I do this method now, but maybe it would work for you. The main pro for refurbishing is obviously you can play your games now. And once the pins are bent back to the proper way, they stay that way for a long while. I suppose it does really depend on how much you're swapping games in and out of your console, though. 
The con to this method is sometimes you can't seat your games down into the console, which really isn't a big deal to me, but other people may have an issue with it. And depending on how hard the pins are bent back, the games might be a little difficult to insert and remove again. These pins can be very tight if they are bent too far. The pros for purchasing a new connector is you don't need to refurbish anything and it's a drop in part after you remove all those screws. The cons though, it's not an OEM part, so how long it really lasts is up in the air. I know the Nintendo one has lasted for almost 40 years. Can you say that you will get the same life out of a cheaply made new part? I don't really know, but personally I like using the old stuff over new items. The last con is it just costs money. The new ones cost about 10 to 15 bucks depending on where you're purchasing them from. Refurbishing is 100% free with only a few tools needed and you can't get much cheaper than free. One quick tip though, when you screw in the carriage, elevator, whatever you call the big black part that goes up and down, if that's too tight, it can get stuck in position. Just put these screws in snugly but not fully tightened down and this won't happen. Once it's all put back together, you're good to go for years to come. Now it's just the pain of putting all 21 screws in again. Just remember that there are two larger ones for the black carriage, but all the rest are the same, so at least that makes it easy. I hope this info helped you, and if you enjoy content like this, please consider subscribing and check out my full playlist of other repair videos just like this one. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next fix.